Good morning, folks. This is how we doing? Having a good day? No general complaints? How's the work been the first week back? It'll almost be a week as of tomorrow. Not just in here, but in other classes. So, so, one thumbs up, one ug. So, I guess it depends. Down? No? Not a fan. How you feeling, William? Down? Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, buddy. I think I heard a bell. Did I hear, was there a bell? Did y'all hear a bell? Were you paying attention? No. You did? Okay. All right. All right. Um, so I'm going to pause it here and then go ahead and get started. So for everybody coming in. All right, uh, the words are, good morning. Awkward silence, awkward silence, awkward silence. Oh, no, it's not awkward silence. <laughs> You're all on mute. That might be why. <clears throat> okay, anyways, let's get started. So take a look up here, getting the silence in last second. All right. Um, I know that we, this is up from previously, but if I can, just to kind of go over this one more time, what are the three things you have to master to pass, especially any AP class, but let's say this one. What are the three things I mentioned before? I'm no longer on mute, by the way. Anybody? Those three things to master? Understanding your content. Multiple choice questions, yep. Yeah. And FRQ, yeah, you gotta master those three things, okay? So as long as you've been practicing each of those, you'll be in decent shape, okay? Now, if I can, blah, 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 blah. All right, this, is this, is this gonna go on? It is gonna go on for a while, oh, sorry. all right, cool. Let's come back to this. Um, one of the things I'm doing, I think some of you looked at the um, discussion post for this week, is I'm gonna try to now switch up I might still do some discussion posts that are FRQ based, but for the most part, I'm gonna start moving this on into um, uh, some math practice, maybe some practice with graphs, charts, etc., and then maybe some practice as well with designing an investigation, which is the other part of the deck. So last class period, we went over like a ton of math. On this scale right here, how did you do with the math that we went over last class? Informal survey, okay. All right, just so you know, this is not a thumb, okay? This is a thumb, but yeah, okay. All right, anyways, uh, all right, so here's what I'm gonna do. Real quick, I'm gonna go back through this, but for this week, I've given you a practice um, discussion where you go through all these math, uh, math practices again. Also, for those who have been looking, if you come up here and click on Math Continued, It'll take you to how to do apes math, which is what I've already got in here. I put the uh, video up from last time, so that's up on here, okay? So this you can find in the assignment section underneath the review. And I'm gonna add this video I'm recording right now um, for the second half. It's really just like two more, three more things to go over. Yeah, uh, Shiloh, if you want to wait till after um, we start releasing you guys for your own time, I'll go over that with you, no problem, okay? All right. Cool, and the words I'm thinking of are, okay, next up, all right. So going quickly back through everything here. Scientific notation, just so everybody understands, if you're given a number like this and you're not sure what it means, plug it in your calculator, okay? And it'll turn back into a regular number. This is just a way that we um, convert big numbers or super small numbers into like an easier format. Next, the pH scale on here. Don't forget, seven is considered what? All right, neutral, which would be what? What is the only thing that's considered neutral? Water. Water, exactly, right? So you got water, which is H2O. At this side, you have your H plus. At this side, your OH minus, which again, combined, make water. But what do we call the things at this end? Acidic. Acidic, okay? And the thing you'll typically hear is dropping. Dropping the pH or lowering the pH will make it more acidic. And then if you raise, right, or increase, 
right? You're going to be turning it more basic, and that's the end down there at 14. Um, so strong, strong, weaker, and then right here in the middle you have neutral, and you can see them all there on the board. Okay, the other thing is, don't forget, as you go up and down this pH scale, what happens as you move up or down to the overall strength? What happens to the overall strength as you move up or down in the pH scale? Just one number. Yeah, it gets either 10 times stronger or 10 times weaker. That's the key here, okay? So each number you move, multiply by 10, multiply by 10, multiply by 10, multiply by 10. These um, generally, I should, I should say, they increase with each level. So this level would be one, two, three, four, 10 to the fourth times stronger because you multiplied by 10 four times. Each jump is times 10. So that's a rather large number there. Um, next up, uh, we already talked about that. We'll practice it. Percentages. Um, if you can, give me the following percentage. If you have, um, and by the way, if you need a calculator, now's the time to probably get it out. Give me the percentage of this. I had um, 52 out of my 77th graders who um, submitted their project. That was due this weekend. What percent of my students turned their work in? Okay. Yeah, almost three quarters here. Okay. So that's 74%. In terms of how you do that, right, you always put the total on the bottom. And then whatever number you're concerned about, whatever you're looking at, goes on the top. You divide, you get a decimal, like 0.74, and that becomes 74%. Move the decimal twice to the right to get your percents. Okay? Um, what percent of them did not turn their work in? Oh, Lydia's already covered that. Yeah, 36.4. You just, don't, I should guess say subtract that from 100, and you'll find the ones you did. Okay. Um, percent change. This is one that you'll see on the um, discussion post for this weekend. All right, new value minus old value, etc. All right, so if 52 out of 70, right, um, did it earlier, let's say that five more, five more students turned it in by this weekend. What was the percent change, please? If it went up five, what would that percent change be? Okay, if you're getting 81, 81 is not what we're looking for. There's actually a giant uh, thing right here that tells you what you need to do. What you've given me is the new percent. You're not giving me the percent change. The key word here is change. That sounds about right, LaCoya. Yeah. Okay, so if you plug your numbers here into the equation, for those who have already getting this done, right? New value minus old value. So five more did it, right? That means my new value is no longer 52, my new value is 57. So 57 over 70, right? Or I should say just put 57 here. And then over here, we have the old value, which was 52, all right? So divided by the old value. So the old value here was 52. Does that, does that make sense? New value minus old value? All right, and then when you get that, you get five, divided by 52, so that'll be somewhere around 10%, 9 or 10%, which you guys are correct with. Give me a thumbs up if that's easy enough. Yes? Okay. All right. Next up. Um, percents, I don't really care about working on that. Half-life problems, just remember, half-life is the time it takes to be reduced by half. Each time it gets reduced by half, and the half-life is considered to be the length of time it takes. So this took 24 total hours to get from 100% to 6.25%. Again, these videos are up online for you, okay? Um, let me see, metric conversions. King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. 
All right? And if I can, if you look here, all you do is you move your decimal place. If you're going from kilometers to centimeters, kilometers to centimeters, put your decimal right here, move five hops. One, two, three, four, five. So one kilometer becomes 100,000 centimeters, okay? It's a matter of knowing King Henry Dye by drinking chocolate milk. Kilometers, or he kilo, hecto, deca, your base unit, deci, centi, milli, all right? And it's a matter of moving that decimal place. Um, there's some practice there up on canvas. Um, next up, dimensional analysis. If you're doing a dimensional analysis, the whole goal, that's no problem, Silas, the whole goal of dimensional analysis is for you to do this. What's happening here? Anybody, anything, what's happening here? Where I circled. Yeah, the whole idea of dimensional analysis is you are canceling out units, right? To change from one unit to another. In this case, we use what is called a conversion factor. Okay, something that's equal. One foot and 12 inches are the same thing. Therefore, they're essentially one. It's like multiplying it by one. You're not gonna change the value. All you're gonna change is the unit by canceling these out. Okay, and it leaves you with one foot, which is what you wanted. Okay, and again, there are some looms on this for those who want to pull up the presentation and have Miss Manny go through how to do it. Um, let me see here. Then we have the multi-step ones. So for this, converting kilometers per minute to meters per second, right? You have to change kilometers to meters and minutes to seconds. So therefore it's multiple steps. You have to do multiple things. The first step is to write out what you have and then equals what you want. You wanna change it to meters per second, okay? And you fill that space in between them with the conversion factors, converting kilometers to meters, right? And converting minutes to seconds. Now, whether you put the 1,000 on the top or 1,000 on the bottom depends on canceling out the unit. If you have kilometers on top over here, then you want kilometers on the bottom down here. That way they can cancel each other out. So that's how you know where to put it. And then you can use King Henry Dodd by drinking chocolate milk to figure out how many meters are in a kilometer, okay? And move in that decimal place. And you know how many uh, seconds are in a minute for this one. But again, make sure that they're, if it's on the bottom, you place it on the top to cancel and leave you with what you want. Okay. Now, um, don't forget with these, I think I mentioned this in the discussion post, it's important that you remember one point for correct setup, one point for correct answer. So when you're typing your answers in for me here, all right, or if you're just doing it on paper and taking a picture, show your work. Give me a thumbs up if you hear me say, show your work on these. Okay, we wanna get as much credit here as we can, all right? So make sure you do the setup and do the correct answers. Um, growth rates. Growth rates is your rule of 70. It's something we talked about very briefly when we did populations. It's not overly complicated, all right? But essentially, to know whether or not population is doubling in size, how long it takes, the number of years to double, you do the rule of 70, which just basically said take 70 and divide by the growth rate, okay? And how you determine the growth rate is up here. Birth rate minus death rate, and then just add the migration, right? People coming into the country. Um, in this case, it's a negative growth rate, okay? So that's definitely never going to double. But um, it's not overly complicated on, in terms of how to Wait, do it. Wait, did you go back? Yeah. What you need? Yeah. I just need, like... You know this is already up on Canvas, right? There's this whole presentation. I it on Canvas because I couldn't really find it. Yeah, it's at the bottom of the math practice page. Right here. PDF overview. Okay? Thumbs up? Okay. All right. Bring it on over here. Okay. Uh, I don't want to do the practice. I want to move on to this. We only have two more to go that will work on designing investigations. But um, how many of you remember net primary productivity, NPP? It was like the first month, maybe. Okay? And here's what I'll tell you, most of the, the only really challenging thing I see in all the work we've done so far is really gonna be the dimensional analysis. But once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. This is actually very simple and very easy, although all these acronyms certainly look um, you know, scary. But here's what I'll tell you. The, the equation itself is simple. Just subtract two numbers. Subtract these two things, gives you that thing. That's all NPP is. 
the net primary productivity. For those who've done physical science, you remember we talked about net force, right? And I think I mentioned me and my friend Tony, we were both pulling, or so we were both trying to make the canoe, right, go our way. As Tony was pulling this way with like 50 newtons of force, I was pulling this way with like 20 newtons of force because I was much smaller than Tony. So the net force is the overall direction. So what's the net force here in this situation? Thirty, which way? Newtons to the to my left. Yeah, thirty newtons to the left, right? We're going thirty newtons to the left. All right, and that's because since they're going opposite directions, you subtract. That gives you the net force. All right, you could certainly add these two things up, but that would give you seventy, and that doesn't really represent anything. Net force is the overall direction of things. So when we talk about here net primary productivity. We're, we're literally talking about the fact that, all right, how much is being produced by our producers, right? Considering the fact that they still have to perform what process? All right, I tell you what, I circled it. I guess I'll go ahead and say it, respiration. Um, again, I, I'd encourage you to like speak up and if you're doing it behind a mute button, I guess that's okay. But again, the idea of respiration is this, Plants do both respiration and photosynthesis. They do both of them. They make their own food, and then they have to burn their food for ATP. Okay? So they're creating glucose and then turning it into ATP, respiration. So what you're looking at for net primary productivity is how much, right? How much more are they producing than using? Okay? That's the thing. They're kind of canceling each other out here. How much they're making versus how much they're using. So if you're looking here, gross primary productivity you should know from GDP. GDP is just how much stuff do we make economically, right? That's your GDP. Same thing here, how much stuff do they make, um, the amount of light that plants convert to chemical energy, how much glucose are they making overall, right? And you're gonna subtract the respiration, how much is used, and it will leave you with the net primary productivity. And you can see the units measured here, okay? Um, why did I uh, come up with So, Try this, simple equation on the board. Can y'all see that? If you can't see it, let me know, all right? And try to do this problem right here, okay? Uh, it says if the GPP for a patch of forest is 10 kilograms of carbon per meter squared per year, and the amount of carbon dioxide is leaving the system, um, don't ask how we measured this. Why did I put that? Oh, because I copied it from a, uh, another source, that's why. All right, anyways. And the amount of carbon dioxide leaving the system is five kilograms of carbon meter squared per year. What is the overall NPP? And when it says carbon dioxide leaving the system, they essentially mean respiration, okay? Give me a number when you come up with it. Okay, uh, I'm getting some answers, and the last thing I'll say is when you're putting your answer in, remember, units matter. We talked about this in like your physical science class, for those who had, um, those who had me, probably in Miss Manning's class in chemistry, I'd imagine she's a pretty big stickler on this too. Uh, if you don't put the right unit, you're not gonna get credit. So be careful with the units you send. Trying to give people a chance to, to type it in. All right, um, I don't feel again like this one's too complicated, but just to kind of go through it while people are finishing it up, you're looking for the NPP, net primary productivity, okay? And you know the equation is GPP minus respiration. So start plugging the numbers you know. What don't we know? We don't know NPP, so that will stay a variable. We do know the GPP, right? It says it's 10 kilograms of carbon per meter squared per year. So put 10. Then we're looking for respiration. Well, they don't really say the word respiration, but they do say 
carbon dioxide leaving the ecosystem. So that's the only other option I have here. So that's probably gonna be my respiration value. So I'll put five. And I mean, I don't necessarily know why, you know, I, I have um, an AP class taking a significantly long amount of time to figure out what 10 minus five is, but that is gonna be five. And if you look, they have the both the same units here. So I'm gonna end up with the same unit here in my answer response. So we have kilograms per meter squared per year. Give me a thumbs up if that's easy enough. Yes? Okay. Any questions about this? It's just a matter of plugging those numbers in. All right. Uh, and then that's it. So that's all the math you have to be able to do on the AP test by the end of the year. And we'll get some more practice through the second semester doing it. Okay? Um, last chance for anybody, any questions about math related material? Um, is it okay if we go over the doubling uh, and the growth rate again? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, no problem. Let me see. Okay. So over here, it's a pretty simple process, okay? So we're looking at, it's called the rule of 70, right? And at some point, you're just gonna have to memorize that. I mean, you can always wait till the last second in terms of memorizing this, but um, it's always just good practice to do it. But anyways, if I can, it's simple matter of this. The number of years it takes a population to double can be predicted by taking the number 70 and dividing by its annual percentage growth rate, the growth rate of that population, okay? Now, the growth rate of any population is going to be based off of how many people are born, how many people die, and how many people come into or leave the country, right? You have immigration, which means coming in, and emigration, which means leaving, all right? So that's how you determine that. But just on a simpler level here, all right, try typing this in as an answer for me, please. If I'm talking about country X, and country X has an annual percentage growth rate of let's say five, how many years is it going to take for that population of country X to double? Yeah, the answer you get is in years. It says number of years to double. Okay, so if we look right here, the only thing is that frustrates me with just um, math stuff is that kids sometimes forget to use the equations that they're given. There's a reason you're given an equation here is to plug the numbers in. Well, we know that five, I just pointed it right here, right, is the annual percentage growth rate. So that goes here on the bottom. And so you do the math, 70 divided by five. I had some people send me multiplied numbers, okay? But when you divide 70 by five, you get 14. So therefore, it would take 14 years, okay, for this population to double. So let's say it started at 3,000, right, and it had a growth rate of five, it would take 14 years to go to 6,000, okay? That's essentially what they're saying here through the rule of 70. Give me a thumbs up if that general idea there makes sense. Okay, all right. Now, the only other thing that might come up, I mean, I very much doubt it, but that might come up is this equation here. What if you have to calculate the growth rate? Okay, well, as you can see right here, the equation is pretty simple. The growth rate of any population is gonna be how many people are born minus how many people die, right? And then you add in the migration, right? How many people are coming in or going out, okay? So let's go back to this, all right? I want you to calculate this time for country Y. What's the doubling time for country Y if they have, let's say, a birth rate of three, a death rate of one, and a migration of one? How many years will it take them to double? So calculate the growth rate first. 
and then plug it into the rule of 70. <laughs> ish, that's a good way, but you can always put a decimal with some numbers, but ish, ish is okay. Okay, there we go. These are the answers I'm expecting from you guys. Okay, much better. So if we're looking right here, simple matter again, taking your numbers and plugging them into the equation. So we have a three, we have a one, we have one, so that's three minus two, which gives us one. Is that right? Is that right? We get one here. Okay, what did I do wrong then? All right, I'm sorry. I just threw in a little bit extra here. This is doing that poor order of operations. Remember, you, you do it from left to right. I did those two first. You can't do that. That's not how you do math. All right, so start over here. You get three minus one, which gives you two, right? And then two plus one will give you three, okay? So you take that three, plug it in over here, and 70 divided by three is, what'd you guys say, 23.3-ish? Yeah, I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. Okay, um, does this make sense? Give me a thumbs up if that's easy enough to do. All right, well done. All right, do me a favor. Take one minute, stand up, stretch, breathe, slap yourself in the face, get a drink um, before I move on into this next section here, okay? Take one minute and then come back.